Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Today is February the 3rd, 2018. This is a week after a fight that, quite frankly, is one of the better fights I have seen between two fighters who I consider to be among the very best in the sport of boxing. Let's talk about Alexander Usyk's victory over Maris Breedis last week, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, in my opinion, if you're looking at the heavyweight division, if you're thinking to yourself, who would be the guy in a round robin tournament who might end up winning the whole thing, then in my opinion, you needed to look at this fight, right? Right now, the question for me personally isn't whether Alexander Usyk is the best cruiserweight on the planet. Let me point out too, the Dordicos Gassia fight is going to go off in a few hours, right? I don't, you know, let's just say Usyk still has work to do to win the unified cruiserweight title, right? But because I'm convinced, I'm, I'm completely convinced that Usyk right now would beat Manuel Char who Maris Breedis already beat. Understand, Char has a share of the heavyweight title. And because I'm firmly convinced that Usyk would beat Deontay Wilder, Usyk would beat Luis Ortiz, and Usyk would beat Anthony Joshua, right? I personally view Usyk as one of the key people to watch in the sport of boxing. So the question for me here, right, above 175 pounds, isn't whether Usyk is the best cruiserweight. The question for me is whether Usyk is the best, period. Right, let me add this too. When I see a fight like this, two unbeaten champions, both of whom show up and show a level of ring generalship that 99% of the fighters don't have. I have more questions. Maris Breedis, folks, yes, I believe he beats Wilder. I believe he beats Luis Ortiz. I believe he beats Anthony Joshua. Now, I know... Casual fans are going to disagree with me. That's all right. I'll still show my face at the casino. I'll still make the bets I'm going to make. Right? It's the casual fans who make gambling worthwhile for people who are looking at fights and doing their homework. Let's talk about the fight. Let me just say this. You're going to have a hard time. Right? It happens, let's say, once a year. But you're going to have a hard time finding an unbeaten reigning champion who is willing to risk not only his unbeaten streak, but his title on the road in the opponent's backyard where the opponent himself is unbeaten and a reigning champion. Folks, that's just what Alexander Usyk did. He's fighting in Breedis' country. He's fighting in Breedis' town. He's putting it all on the line. Right? All on the line. Both guys are unbeaten. You don't have that in fights like Canelo against Golovkin. You, you're not going to have that for Groves 
versus Eubank. You had that here. Let me also say too that I have no doubt, especially after watching this fight, that both of these guys in the entire sport are in the top 10 in terms of skill level pound for pound. Understand again, Breedas has beaten a currently reigning heavyweight champion. Right? He did so by stoppage. Now here, this fight's breathtaking. Usyk, who's like the New England Patriots, he's a different fighter every fight. You watch him and you realize that he's looked at the film. He's created a strategy. He's the thinking man's fighter. Right? Usyk, a lefty, comes into this fight and decides he's going to throw a lot of jabs. I mean, I'm, I'm laughing about it here. I looked at the first two rounds of this fight. My mouth was open. It was shocking. Usyk comes out and he decides in Breedis' backyard that he's going to apply pressure to get Breedis on his back foot to flush Breedis out of the pocket. Think about that. So what you see here is a skill level, in my opinion, that very few in the sport can match. Usyk's jab is accurate. It's a great jab. He marries it with a set of feints that keep you guessing on when he's going to throw the jab, even as he's on his way to throwing more than 500 jabs in the fight. He sets a pace where one of boxing's best athletes, Breedis, has to get defensive. In other words, Usyk doesn't give Breedis an opportunity early in the fight to get in the fight. He doesn't give the crowd an opportunity to get into the fight. But where you move from very good fighter to the pound for pound list is when you notice that Breedis, who has fast hands, who knows how to jump in, who has an excellent straight right hand, it's when you notice that when Breedis jumps inside, Usyk has great defense. Folks, he's shooting a jab, but when Breedis jumps inside, he has both hands up. Not only that, he's still creating angles. He's not just standing there like this. No, he's leaning. He has a move. He has a lean. He's very hard to hit. He knows the angles. Right? So, Breedis comes down Main Street with the right hand. And you'll notice, Usyk. This is an active Usyk. Throwing a lot of punches. Somehow, in the middle of throwing a lot of punches, Usyk has his hands up. Usyk has a lean going. Usyk has a turn going. Right? Usyk somehow finds a way to get out of the frame. Now, I'll just say this. Oh, and let me point out the obvious too. Usyk, a southpaw, knows how to get his lead right foot outside of Breedis' left foot. He's coming in jabbing and he's coming in at an angle. Right? Now let me just say this and I'm going to be diplomatic here with my choice of words. I'm going to be respectful with my choice of words here. Simply put, this is a higher skill level. These are skills. This is knowledge. This is the ability to translate knowledge into action in the ring in the middle of a title fight between two unbeatens. And of course, Usyk's the one on the road. What Usyk shows, in my opinion, and you need to frame this piece of tape, not this video, but the fight tape,
right? What Usyk is showing is a higher level of skill, a greater level of awareness than most of the guys wearing heavyweight belts. Right? Now, Usyk is an Olympic gold medalist. I hope people understand that you don't have to be the bigger man in the ring to be the better man in the ring. The pace he sets is something that simply put a Wilder, an Ortiz, a Joshua wouldn't be able to match. His defense is superior to the defense of Joshua and Wilder. I'll give Luis Ortiz respect defensively. Right? But just understand, Usyk is a level of knowledge and execution. Right? A skill set that the other guys just don't have. Not only that, you can tell from the pace he sets from the opening bell in this fight. Just look at the copy box numbers. And the fact that this fight went 12 rounds against a guy who's a superior athlete to someone like Luis Ortiz. You could just imagine Luis Ortiz following Usyk around the ring. Now, Usyk in this fight is front foot. All right? I'm just telling you, Usyk has an advanced back foot game. You could just imagine someone like Luis Ortiz who has defense, has better defensive skills, in my opinion, than Joshua and Wilder. You could just imagine Ortiz trying to treat Usyk like Usyk is a cruiserweight, running after Usyk, getting hit with counters, and then having his lack of athleticism, I'm talking about Ortiz's lack of athleticism, betray him in the middle rounds and getting stopped by Usyk. Understand, Breedis doesn't get stopped because Breedis is one of boxing's best athletes. Now, it's interesting here because Usyk's able to flush Breedis out of the pocket. Understand, Breedis in nine fights out of ten has better movement than his opponent, has better balance than his opponent. Right here, you're dealing with two guys with great balance and great movement. So Breedis is a little bit lost at first on how to deal with Usyk's jab. Eventually, Breedis starts ducking under the jab. Then starts stepping in and throwing long right hands. But Breedis was unable, and this is one of the keys of the fight, he was unable to stay in the pocket, to get an anchor, and to throw uppercuts. While he's able to get to Usyk's body, and understand, Breedis is shorter than Usyk, right? I don't believe taller fighters like a Joshua or a Wilder would have a chance to get to Usyk's body, right? What you'll notice, though, is as Breedis gets into Usyk's body, Usyk makes sure that it's momentary, right? He's able to get into that defense again, and he's able to move. He's able to change the angles, right? So, from where I sit, let me just tell you my betting strategy, and I know the public's going to disagree. Hell, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that Usyk would be the underdog in any fight against Wilder or Joshua, right? We would view it as a small man facing a bigger man. My betting strategy, and obviously I'm going to have to go here, right? but my betting strategy would be to take Usyk over Wilder, Joshua, Ortiz, right? The guys who I worry about Usyk against would be Joseph Parker, who, in my opinion, 
is probably the best athlete at heavy, right? Since these guys are cruisers, right? Parker can move. Parker is fresh. Parker, in my opinion, has already faced difficult guys like Yui Fury, right? So Parker's accustomed to having to follow a guy around the ring. Also, I know the boxing public disagrees with me. I've read your comments. But Parker, when he wants, has one of boxing's best jabs and hits a hell of a lot harder than people realize. Simply put, I'm expecting Parker to beat Anthony Joshua in Joshua's backyard. Right? Tyson Fury is interesting. Because Tyson Fury has a skill set where it would be interesting. Fury could push an Usyk out of the pocket. But Usyk's too fluid. Fury is too rusty. Fury's talking about fighting people like Shannon Briggs. It'll take Fury at least a year. At least a year. In my opinion, to be competitive against Usyk. And while Fury can move, he doesn't move as well as Maris Breedis, right? Let me say, too, there are other heavyweights. I know this guy has made mistakes. I know this guy doesn't have a title right now. In fact, let me name two such guys. But I do believe that Alexander Povetkin is much more dangerous than people realize. Right? He's one of the better athletes at heavyweight. Right? He's a guy who can fight low. I believe Alexander Povetkin and Lucas Brown, who has great feet. Right? As you look at Lucas Brown, and I know he gets put down by Chigayev, then has to get off the canvas. But as you look at Lucas Brown, understand Lucas Brown is a guy who can control spacing in a fight, right? I believe the guys who have great legs, who are more daredevilish than, let's say, Wilder, who was very tentative against Gerald Washington, right? And Joshua, who always strikes me as tentative, right? I believe a Povetkin, a Lucas Brown, could conceivably give an Usyk or a Breedis problems. But make no mistake about it. I think both of these cruiserweights, both Usyk, who won this fight, deserve to win, right? And Breedis, who loses the fight because in the early rounds he's flushed out the pocket, takes him a while to figure out how to deal with Usyk's jab. I believe both of those guys are not only viable at heavy, I believe they're championship level because we're in an era right now where guys who are big and clunky, flat-footed, relying on power, guys who aren't even accustomed to being taken into the later part of the fight, right? Think about it. Wilder and Joshua combined have gone the distance once. Right? I believe these guys, when faced with a mobile guy who can hide his head, who can bob and weave, who can shoot jabs and rotate the pocket continuously, who can set a pace that these clunky guys are not accustomed to fighting. Think about it. The pace set by Vladimir Klitschko against Joshua wasn't that mind-blowing. Right? Joshua's completely spent in the seventh round, folks. He needs a second win. Now, we happen to be fighting a guy who was, what, 39, 40 years old? So, you know, Klitschko himself was pacing himself. What happens when he, Joshua's bone tired in the middle of a fight and he's facing a guy who just threw more than 500 jabs over 12 rounds? When he's fighting a guy who has this level of intensity, folks, as you look at the Usyk-Breedis fight, 
what I want you to do is to look at what's flushing Breedus out of the pocket. You're talking about a guy in Usyk who, if he wants, could be a combination puncher. When I say he's committed to the jab, folks, he's throwing a lot of jabs every minute of the first 12 minutes of this fight. Right? Just ask yourself, as you look at Usyk's volume, who has shown this level of volume against Wilder and Joshua? Right? I'll agree. There are some heavyweights. Parker, Prevetkin, uh, Brown, who would give these guys more of a challenge. But I say more of a challenge. Right? I'm not convinced that Big Daddy Lucas Brown beats either of these guys. Right? So to sum up, this is an important fight to watch. I call it a real fight. In other words, there's hype out there on, you know, I keep hearing about, you know, Joshua and Wilder and other divisions. I hear about, you know, fighters who have the spotlight on them, Canelo, who when you look at the guys, you see holes in their game. Right? With these two guys, think about it. Breedus loses in his hometown, and yet I still think he beats at least three of the reigning heavyweight champions. Char, who he's already stopped in a fight. Right? Wilder and Joshua, two guys with belts who are unbeaten. Right? That's the level we're talking about here. I haven't even gotten to the winner yet. Alexander Usyk. Let me say this, too. The of dordikos fight, and I'm leaning Gassiev in that fight, right? But let's say Gassiev comes out of that fight. Now ask yourself, simple question, who in the heavyweight division throws shorter punches than Gassiev and knows how to go to the body better than Gassiev? Right? Just take a glance at the Wildertrick fight. Gassiev's last fight. Right? Who knows how to do that at heavyweight right now? If you're scratching your head, if you're looking for answers, <laughs> right, just understand that's how dangerous the cruiserweight division is. This World Boxing Super Series, understand, the winner is going to have a lot of opportunities. But I think you need to look at the runners-up. I believe there are also threats for the heavyweight division. Right? There's a reason why the heavyweight division hasn't been dominated historically by big guys who can punch, who get gassed in the seventh round of fights. Right? Understand, in earlier generations, people thought George Foreman was unbeatable. Right? You know, Primo Carnera didn't last as a heavyweight champ. Smaller guys who could move. Ezra Charles beats Joe Lewis. Right? Floyd Patterson ruled the roost in the 1950s. Agility, skill set. Right? I'm, I'm just telling you, Usyk, this fight frames his front foot game. I'm just telling you, he has a back foot game. I'm just telling you, there are Usyk fights where he doesn't throw 500 jabs. You can't even label him a jabber, even though he has a great jab. Because the guy has so many other facets to his game. If you get one takeaway from this, one, please, take the cruiserweight division seriously. Talent-wise, in my opinion at least, there might not be a better division in boxing right now. Let me also say, too, the betting opportunities are off the scale. This fight, Usyk against Breedus, wasn't even shown on network TV here in the United States. What are they thinking here in the U.S.? This is one of the best fights that could have been made in boxing. 
And folks, as you watch the fight, you realize the fight is delivery. Also, let me just say too, some fighters wilt in big moments. You just saw Alexander Usyk travel to Latvia to fight Latvia's best, to put his title and his unbeaten streak on the line. And his idea of winning the fight was to flush the local fighter out of the pocket. Think about it. Right? Well, let's hope Alexa finishes here in the background. Let me just say, I'm expecting a cruiserweight invasion of the heavyweight division. While the odds makers will be surprised, for gamblers who have watched these guys a fight at a time, just be prepared to cash in. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I congratulate Alexander Usyk. I believe in my pre-fight comments here online. I picked Usyk in this one, even though the fight was in Latvia and he delivered. This is a horse you can ride. Anyway, let me hear from you. I hope to read your comments in the comment section to this video. And for the fight that's going off, the other semifinal fight, I do like Gassiev over Dordicos. I believe I've made a video on that already. Just Google it here on YouTube. Thanks for stopping by.